Um, uh, Professor Thomas Michael Kenny, Georgetown University basketball program historiographer, uh, analyst, and supporter. Uh, thank you for taking the time today to, to speak with us. Certainly. Um, I was hoping you could provide us some perspective on the recent uh, victory over the University of North Carolina and perhaps some, some broader reflections on the program, where it's been, where it's going, and what this season means in the broader scheme. Well, I'd have to say the win on Sunday against North Carolina was the most remarkable win in the history of the program. Uh, not the biggest, because uh, this a program that's won a national championship and that still has to stand alone as the biggest win in the history of the program. Uh, but if you can understand the distinction, the most remarkable, uh, it would have been a remarkable win if it were just the regular season game in December uh, to be down the way they were and to come back and to see a team uh, like North Carolina that highly rated uh, just wear down and collapse the way they did. But when you take into account the situation, uh, regional final with the program's first final four birth in 22 years on the line as a number two seed against a number one seed in North Carolina, one of the top two or three uh, programs in the history of the sport uh, to be down 10 late in the second half and to come back the way they did and then to just bulldoze them the way they did in overtime and really turn the game uh, almost into a blowout <laughs> in overtime. Uh, you factor all that together uh, where they did it in an area where, uh, you know, where the team has so much history with so many, such a, so many fans there, uh, I would say it's the most remarkable one in the history of the program. Um, and I think certainly the hardcore supporters of the program are still in a little bit of a state of shock because um, I don't think anybody uh, envisioned this much success so soon. Uh, and uh, usually uh, you have to knock on the door for a little while, establish yourself before you get to this level. You know, like you see the Indianapolis Colts, uh, took them a while to get to a Super Bowl before they finally did. Um, it's a program that missed uh, the NIT entirely three years ago. Uh, and uh, within the span of one, one cycle, I mean, the students who are seniors now or freshmen then uh, is in the final four. So uh, I think it's an incredible amount of success uh, that nobody could have expected uh, to occur this quickly. I think uh, when John Thompson III took over three years ago, I think people were probably hopeful we could be an NCAA tournament team by now, uh, but certainly not uh, one of the top four teams in the country by this point. Uh, so it's truly remarkable series of circumstances. What was it like being at the game? You were there in person in uh, in uh, Rutgers. Uh, I don't really know where the game was played. I know it was, it was played in New played, Jersey. Played in the Continental Airlines Arena. Continental the Airlines. The Jersey Swamps. It was a chaotic night in the Jersey Swamps. A wild night. A wonderful night. Um, I think, uh, as I said earlier, I think uh, Friday night was incredible relief and Sunday night was incredible disbelief. I think Vanderbilt being Friday night. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt game being Friday night. I think everyone expected us to win that game and set up the showdown with North Carolina. And it was much tougher than people probably expected, especially given that we'd be in the team by 16 points uh, very early in the season. A game we watched together, if you remember, which you don't. I, I don't. No, no memory whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I could say with total confidence I have, I have absolutely no memory no of that memory game. No memory of that game. Okay. Um, so... Uh, that was a game I think everybody was expecting us to win the entire time. They were expecting us to pull away, and we never did. And then when Vanderbilt took a one-point lead after uh, you know, being awarded 30 or 40 free throws in the final four minutes, uh, I think there was kind of a moment of terror among uh, the fans, certainly in the arena, that we could actually lose this game. And what a devastating way uh, to end the season that would be, to you know, come up short against the team probably felt we were superior to and not get that you know, shot at North Carolina on Sunday. So when Green hit that uh, amazing shot and <clears throat> uh, Vanderbilt couldn't answer on the other end, I think, I think there was just an incredible amount of relief 
uh, among the fans there that we had survived, which is the name of the game in the NCAA tournament, survive in advance. And uh, on Sunday, I'd say the atmosphere was one of disbelief. Uh, that while I think everybody, most fans going home were optimistic we could pull off the victory, I think Carolina appeared to be a step ahead of us for most of the game and, you know, aided by the officials awarding them ten times the amount of free throws that they awarded Georgetown. Uh, and that's so, not that much of an exaggeration because it, because really, it actually was five to one. It, it was five yeah, times so the number of free throws. I'm not exaggerating that much. Right. So... Uh, you know, we find ourselves down 10 with about seven minutes left, and I feel right about that point people are starting to lose hope. They're still rallying the team, but just they're, we're kind of hanging by a thread here. One more North Carolina run, one, you know, five points in a row to make it 15. I think people would just have about given up. But instead, we put together a couple possessions, put together a couple baskets, cut the lead to three, and people started to believe again. Uh, got within one, Carolina scored, got within one again, Carolina scored, uh, and then Wallace hit the three to tie it, and Carolina really looked inept on their final possession, uh, and we were going overtime. So now the game starts over again at zero, and overtime, I think, was uh, with each basket, which is the uh, coming to a greater levels of realization, greater levels of understanding that this was going to happen, that they actually were going to pull off this remarkable win. All right, we're up two. Great. Okay, now we're up four. Now we're up six, and we're about two minutes in the overtime. Uh, now we're up eight. Or there's only two minutes left to go in the game. Is this actually going to happen? And uh, probably uh, for each person, it occurred at a different specific instant, but realizing that, uh, wow, they're really going to do this, and they're really going to go to the final four. And uh, for me personally, I, I don't know how much it was all sinking in at the time, uh, how amazing it truly was. Henry Hyde played on the George Hamm basketball team. He did. Team. Uh, he was on our first Final Four team in 1943. Is that true? Yes. Wow. Were, were there how many universities competing at that time? Was it was it was it eight in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, eight. was it eight? Started. So we won one game, and got to the Final Four, and then won another game, and got to the final, and lost to uh, the University of Wyoming, I believe. Uh, but you know, that, I mean, that last part you made up. No. We I, we lost to the University of Wyoming, no, did yeah. we? No, yeah. Look it up. I think I'm pretty sure. I don't trust books, Tom. <laughs> books got all sorts of words in them. Now, you know, as I've often said, my long-term association with the university consists of one thing and one thing only, and that's win games. Okay, just win. I don't care what they do. I don't care if we have. Uh, I don't. We. I don't care if we have a hospital. I don't care if we have a nursing school. I don't care if we have a performing arts center. Okay, knock them all down and just build a palace for John Thompson. Okay. If I had my oh, truthers, both John Thompsons. Yeah, but well, yeah, Paul, why not? If I had my truthers, that's what I'd do. Give them both pals. But uh, kind of like Saddam and his sons. You could <laughs> uh, make that comparison, sure. Um, so uh, you know, what, whatever else the university does probably isn't going to affect me in any material way. So right. I, I just like to win some win some damn games, and they're doing it. So let's just one more question. Sure. Uh, Ohio State. Our next game, it's going to be Saturday in Hotlanta. Um, the ATL. The ATL, as it were. Um, as I was talking to you earlier tonight, apparently they have a, a player named Odin, who you informed me his first name is Greg. I thought it was... Uh, Larry. I thought it was Larry. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, they're... You know, they're, 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 they finished the season number one team in the country. They haven't lost a game since early January. Uh, all of their losses were against teams uh, seeded either one or two in the NCAA tournament, I believe. I think they only lost four games all year. Um, so, uh, but they, like us, are were not lucky, but they survived a couple of NCAA tournament games by the skin of their teeth, especially the Xavier game, uh, where they needed a three at the buzzer just to tie it and send it in overtime. Uh, so they're not unbeatable. Uh, we're certainly not unbeatable either. Uh, and uh, the guys in Vegas who know a thing or two about this had uh, the game as a virtual pick em, though I heard the well, may moved up to Georgetown by one today. So uh, I'll go with the guys in Vegas and say it's pretty much a toss-up at this point. And how much money do you have on the game? Uh, $2,200. Professor Kenny? Thank you so much for speaking with us, uh, with us uh, this, e this evening. Anytime.